Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Bard's Tale Trilogy, shall we? Well, I'm excited to play this. I don't know what it's going to do in terms of remaking the original Bard's Tale games, um, but I want to dive in and see. Uh, I got this on Xbox Game Pass, and I've owned Bard's Tale for Nintendo for a long time, remember it, but I never got too far in the game years and years and years ago when I played the original, and from what I understand, these are kind of very funny, sarcastic style of uh, RPGs in this early, you know, PC console era where you're playing the game for Commodore or, you know, uh, for... Nintendo, and it might be a wizardry-style game, but with a great sense of humor. So I'm really excited to see uh, what they've done with the remaster, and also just experience the game. So let's go. Alright, so we're going to start a new game, and I'm going to start at the very beginning, Volume 1. Oh my goodness. Yep, this is the game I had for the Nintendo. I don't believe, actually, that these other games, Destiny Knight or Bard's Tale 3, were out for the Nintendo. They might have come out for the Super Nintendo, but these might be PC exclusives. I, I could be wrong about that. But anyway, um, I'm going to start with Tales of the Unknown, Volume 1. And you can play it in Legacy Mode or in revamp mode. And I'm going to try revamp mode, and if it looks like I can't take it, I might go legacy mode, but let's just see uh, if there's, you know... Oh! The song I sing will tell the tale of a cold and wintry night when the evil fled and brave men bled, the dark one came to stay. Look at that guy. Okay of castle walls and torchlit halls and a price men had to pay. Strumming away on his guitar. Nice gold chain. Mug of beer. Just a bard doing his thing. Till men of old for blood and gold had rescued Scara Bray. Wow, look at that treasure chest. You stick your sword in to see how deep it is. Make sure there's no snakes at the bottom or something. Volume 1, Tales of the Unknown. The legend of Scarabray. Long ago, in the land of Caith, when magic still prevailed, the evil wizard Mangar the Dark threatened a small but harmonious town called Scarabray. Overnight, all the town's militiamen disappeared, and Mangar froze the surrounding countryside with a spell of eternal winter totally isolating it from any possible help. As evil creatures oozed into the sewers to join Mangar's shadow crusade, the future of Scarabray hung in the balance, and who was left to resist? Only a handful of unproven young warriors, some junior magic users, a couple of bards barely old enough to drink, and a few out-of-work rogues. Hilarious. You are the leader of this ragtag group of freedom fighters, Luckily, you have a bard with you to sing your glories, if you survive, for this is the stuff of legends, and thus the story begins. So this is a fun beginning. So, we got an evil wizard, that's 95% of D&D campaigns, and um, they've he's isolated this town, and we need to you know rise up against the shadow crusade of Mangar, but unfortunately, our group is uh, young people, and so we have some young warriors, some junior magic users, and some young bards. As you enter the guild, you catch the eye of the guildmaster. Well met, brave adventurer, but you come in the most dire of times. The evil wizard Mangar has cursed our town with this blizzard, and the streets are overrun with all matter of evil miscreants. Okay, and so, as you can see, this 
entire screen has been reworked from what it would have been in legacy mode, which is the more, you know, Nintendo or old PC style presentation with very, very little uh, that information that it can do with the pixels given. And yet, I feel like the essence of the original is maintained, and this isn't exactly some kind of lavish, expensive remaster here. Uh, it's, it's just a slight brush up from, you know, what would be horrifying on the eyes of those not familiar or not from that generation, and that's okay. You must help us defeat Mangar. In this guild, you will find many skilled warriors and mages that would join you in this quest. When your party is ready, set out into town. Be sure to visit Garth's shop to the north and equip yourself for battle. He has the finest weapons and armor in Skara Bray and indeed is the only shop brave enough to open these days. I see. The city has an abundance of temples that are open night and day to heal your wounds, and I believe Roscoe is still doing good business, restoring magic points for your mages. And when your bard gets thirsty, be sure to visit one of the many inns and taverns. The Scarlet Bard to the south has the best selection in town. Okay. Sure. Now I bid you good day and good luck in your quest. The Guildmaster smiles and returns to what he was doing. Thou art in the Guild of Adventurers. Okay. So many, many of these games, in my experience, began this way. Ultima Exodus, um, Wizardry, even Might Magic 3 to an extent, where you are forming a party. They might give you a default party. This game didn't even do that. It didn't even give you like a recommended party and then you can swap in people that you want. This is like, we're by this fire, people are drinking, and let's go ahead and make some people. So I'm gonna push A and add a member to um, your party. And um, you, oh, never mind. It does give you, it says party, the A team. Brian the Fist, El Cid, Marcus, Sir Grady, Merlin, and Omar, or, um, and these are all level two people, and you can just be like, do it. And it populates your whole list with a variety, right? Now, you can use this group. You got a paladin, a warrior, a bard, a rogue, and a conjurer. And Omar is... I don't know what M.A. is. Mage, I guess. And that's cool. Or you could, like, make your own completely uh, of, you know, whatever you want. Looks like there's a seventh slot. Let me see if I can add someone. Um, what if I uh, create a new member? And we're going to make a male. And it's going to be a human... Um, Let's see, so the choices are Warrior, Paladin, Rogue, Bard, Hunter, Monk, Conjurer, and Magician, okay? And so in, in this breakdown, there's no healer. There's no, like, cleric or priest. Interesting. There's a Paladin, but I don't know if this Paladin has any healing powers or not. Uh, we'll find out. I'm going to, or maybe the Bard's heal. I don't know, but my Bard has no spell points. I'm going to make a hunter because, you know, in terms of, like, adding to this base party, uh, that seems wise. I'm going to be using the base party, by the way. And I like base parties because they give you a good feel for the game. And it, they intend this. And if I don't like a particular class, um, I can come back and make new people. And, then, you know, as I get m more experienced, I might want to just make a, a my own, like, crazy combination, but the first time I play a game, I generally just go default and maybe supplement here and there. So let me make a hunter. Oh, and we roll our attributes. There's three dice six. Yep. D&D &D in the flesh. Look at this guy's face. Yep, it's Robin Hood. It's a portly Robin Hood. We couldn't get the best, you know. We, we've got the fourth best. Uh, Reroll. We're going to want... Can I mouse over these to get information? Yes, okay. Uh, dexterity measures against uh, measures agility and nimbleness. A high score makes your characters harder to hit and helps them strike the first blow in combat. 
Strength is physical power and chiefly affects the amount of damage a character can do to an opponent in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Make sure your fighting characters are strong. Intelligence is mental power, and this is good for magic. Constitution gives you more hit points. Luck, um... Okay. I guess we want just a high dexterity. These are terrible rolls. That's very strong. I would sometimes do this in games where I would be rolling for so long to get those stats that you want. That's not bad. That's also not bad. Dumb as a doornail. Well, that's actually... Man, eh, not very lucky, though. I kind of want you to be sort of lucky. Now we can do better. We can do much better. That's good. Not that lucky. Not that smart. But darn we're fast. Accept it. Um, class default. Oh, I can choose different ones. Oh, let's see what we got. Nice. Look at this guy. These pictures are ridiculous. Alright, let's see what we got. Okay, yep, yeah, I see you. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's it. This is perfect for um, the channel icon. It doesn't make sense that it's a hunter, but um, the picture is too good. All right, we added Dr. Incompetent, and I am a hunter. Um, okay. And apparently we got a uh, Xbox achievement. All right, I'm going to switch this guy up above our spellcasters. And yeah, that looks great. I have 28 hit points here, so let's put him... He actually might want to go above these other people. I'm just going to put them in order of hit points. Okay, perfect. So now we have a party of seven, and that's such a cool <laughs> number of people for a party. What do I have in my inventory? Nothing. Let's get out of here. Um, let's, let's enter the city. What are more options, by the way? Rename people. Talk to the guild leader. Save party to roster. Um, what does the guild leader even say? An evil wizard, Mangar, is threatening the town. He's brought down a blizzard upon us, and all manner of evil creatures are wandering about. Take a party out into town. Explore everywhere for clues. You must find a way to stop him. I will find a way to stop him. You bet I will. I might not. All right. Um, let me save my party. And this is called... Um, Incompa Party, for now. And we'll just exit to the previous menu, and we're going to enter the city. You've stepped out into the town of Scarabray for the first time. Would you like a quick tutorial on the game controls before you proceed? Well, of course I would. I got 1,200 gold. I can hold 40 things. I'm looking good. Use WASD to move around the town or the cursor keys. You can also left-click on the game to view uh, the game view to move around. Hold down the right mouse on the game view, and you can look around to take in the view. Cool. There's a pause button at the top left of the game view that gives access to graphics, audio, and game settings, as well as saving or loading the game. There's an actions button at the top right of the game view that will drop down a ribbon uh, of actions to choose from. These actions are not usable during game events. You can change the speed that combat messages scroll by pressing the greater than and less than keys or by adjusting the slider in the game settings menu. Pressing the 1 through 7 keys lets you view the stats of one of your party members. If you left-click and drag with your mouse on one of the party member names below, you can change their position in the party, like we just did. Only the first four character slots can be hit by enemy melee attacks. You should try to... That's awesome. Um, so Sir Grady actually... Uh, well, I'll take a look at Sir Grady in a second. I might want him to be moved up. You should try to keep a character slot free so that you could summon creatures or allow roving monsters to join your party. Oh, I messed that up by making my own person. I didn't know that roving monsters could join. Sorry, we're full up, though. Below the game view, totals of your party's gold and inventory items are shown. Any item that is not equipped by a character will go into the communal inventory and is accessible through any player's inventory screen. 
That's all. Now go and stop Manger. All right. Um, I want to just actually see, Sir Grady, what are you? He's a rogue. He's a hobbit rogue examining some gems. Um, and Marcus is our bard. Okay. Oh, God. All right. Well, let's just see how this goes. Uh, what is this? This means... Okay, I'm going to turn. Ooh, neat. All right, all right. Yep, you can hold the mouse button to look around. Okay, it is like 3D rendered for the town. That's fun. All right. Um, and this is a little mini-map, I guess. Oh, I can push M to get that off or on the screen if I want. Fantastic. All right, let's go around and look. Um. Oh my god. The denizens of this mystic place assault you without warning. You see two skeletons. Now wait a minute. I didn't realize there's just monsters in the streets. I thought I could just walk around freely. Let's fight bravely. All right. Brian the Fist has these options this battle round. Um you're just going to attack and you're going to attack and you're going to attack and um Bard song. What can I sing? Um, I don't even know what these do. Oh, okay. Here we go. Uh, heal wounds. Okay, this is how you heal. The fury increases our damage. Anti-magic field. Produces light. More dex Makes everyone more dexterous and agile. And um, making them do less damage. So I can debuff them. I'm going to actually do fury so we can do some damage. Uh, hide in the shadows, 56% chance. Oh, I need to... Yeah, okay, so he can't even attack from back here. So I need to move the bard back here. Um, hide in the shadows, see what happens. Cast a spell. Ooh, there we go. Um, Arc Fire says, A fan of blue flames will shoot from the caster's fingers, doing one to four points of damage to a select opponent, times the caster's level. Yet, yeah, um, do this. And uh, on the two skeletons. And then what spells do you have? Air, armor, quick fix. Oh, regenerates. And vorpal plating. This spell causes the weapon or hands of a party member to be covered with a magical field, which causes them to do extra damage. Great. So the, the mage is like the healer. All right, I'm going to vorpal plate um, Brian the Fist. And this is our list of commands. Let's do it. Oh, my God. Oh, no. What just happened? All right, let's look at the log. Can I scroll on this? Yes. Okay. Um, Sir, Sir Grady's in the shadows, and it says hide down here. He's hidden. Merlin cast arc fire at the skeleton. It hits it for four. El Cid hits it for four. Um, we cast Falcontine's Fury. We got hit for three. El Cid did. Omar cast Vorpal Plating on Brian the Fist. Uh, Marcus got hit for three. Brian the Fist hits for 30 damage and kills it. Wow, Vorpal Plating was unbelievable. And Doctor Incompetent punched it for two. So there's only one skeleton left. Um, can I see, like, any information about this guy? What is this? Bard Song. Oh, it shows our buff. Okay. So that's our Bard Song that's currently active. Um bestiary okay this is some information that i have on the skeleton i guess i don't know very much but they do three to twelve damage all right let's just fight this guy again fight bravely we got this guy attack 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 um oh ranged attack i didn't even know i could do that um with my bard interesting so he definitely needs to go out of here and then once you're hidden in the shadows he can attack uh, we're going to defend, and we're going to defend. Yes. And Sir Grady leaps out of the shadows, swings at the skeleton, and critically hits it for 10 damage and kills it. Boom, we did it. Look at all that treasure. Yes. Who knew these skeletons had a pile of gold and goblets and a crown? This is such a haul. Thank you, skeletons. We actually got 410 pieces of gold, which is an absurd number of gold. I mean, it, it, you know, that was like 
a third of the total gold that we had just added on top. Uh, it, you know, we had 1,200. We just found 410. And we got 31 points of experience. Yes, that was awesome. All right, fantastic, people. We're doing great. Um, now, I don't have a better map of this area. Let's see, can I get a better map? Original cloth map. Oh, wow, I wonder if this came with the game, this cloth map. All right, where am I on this map? Does it not show me? It doesn't. Here's where I want to get. I need to get to, like, the blacksmith. Where in God's name am I now? Where's the bar? Do I see that on here? I'm going to have to figure out where I even am. Like Bard Blazon, is that where I'm at? I don't know. Well, you know what? Does anybody have a spell that would like... Oh my god, I was just standing there and I, and I got into a fight. You face death itself in the form of three barbarians. Okay, so here's the deal. You can't see enemies on the world map and do not just stand there. Time is passing. I Usually in these kind of games, time is not passing while you're standing still. Watch out. All right, we're going to fight. Um, I need to rearrange my party. Can I do that in battle? Probably not. Okay, no. Let's go ahead and attack, 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 and we're going to bard song and get the fury up. We're going to hide in the shadows. We're going to cast a spell of arc fire on the barbarians, and we're going to cast a spell of Vorpal Plating on Brian the Fist again. This was a good... Oh my god. He was not able... Oh, oh, El Cid. El Cid's nearly dead. Marcus lost his voice. So that song didn't work. Okay. So maybe the bard has to roll a check at the end of each round to see if he can keep singing, and we failed. Let's look at this. Um, so Sir Grady was discovered. I love, by the way, that my rogue is named Sir Grady. That's just so funny. I mean, you know, you think it's like a knight? No, no, no. It's your hobbit rogue. Uh, El Cid hit for seven. And then El Cid got hit for nine. Merlin did two damage. El Cid got hit again. Um, and then Brian killed someone with his fist. Okay, uh, we're going to fight. And what we're going to do is a Brian is going to attack foes. I'm going to defend <laughs> against uh, with El Cid. I'm going to attack. And we're just going to... I don't have a healing bard song. Yeah, do that. And then um, we're going to try to hide again. We're going to cast a spell of Sorcerer's Shield. And then we're going to cast a spell of uh, Quick Fix on El Cid and try to resurrect him. Let's see how this goes. The sound effects are hysterical, and I love how it just all plays itself out. Nobody died on our team. Uh, we did kill a barbarian. So, oh, did we win? Let me see. Yeah, Dr. Incompetent hit the barbarian for two and killed it, and then we killed the other one. Yes, we won. We almost died. Jeez, El Cid. We got 85 experience, 562 gold. Ooh, and some scale armor. Baller, El Cid. You need that badly. All right, let's get back to the town. Where in God's name is the, the inn that we came out of? Get in there. Searching the room, you discover some parchment from the Adventurer's Guild Handbook. It reads, Avoid traps. Higher level rogues are excellent at opening chests, but when in doubt, use the trap zap spell. Okay, um, well... Interesting. I want, um, I'm going to do some stuff. Oh, where am I? I guess I can't do these things in here. Um, I don't want to leave the building. I kind of want to stay in here. I'm going to move, uh, the bard back there. And then, 
song list. Oh, he's still singing. Can you sing? Um, are you singing this for real? I don't see the buff of us regenerating hit points. Cannot play songs. Okay. What about you? Um, oh, no, don't switch. Um, can you... Trap Zap, we have that, I guess. Mage Flame. Okay, that lights the area. What about... Um, no, no, no. Uh, what about Omar? Do you have a spell? I need this. Can't cast spells. Alright, we can't cast spells right here. Em leave the house. Um, here, let's go back to... Yes, oh my god, we made it. Can we cast spells here? No, we can't. Alright, but we can do this. Where am I? The party stops for a moment and takes a good look around. You're on Main Street, facing east. It is now noon. Okay, perfect. Play a bard song. Marcus will play the song. Um, give us the uh, healing song. Marcus lost his voice. Do that again. Um, cast a spell. Omar will cast a spell. He's going to cast um, Quick Fix on uh, El Cid. All right, good. Do it again. Uh, but let's see if we can sing. Play a bard song. Marcus. Oh, songs remaining zero. Oh, I see. Lost his voice doesn't mean he failed a check. It just means he can't sing anymore. He has no songs left. I need to rest to get my songs back. I don't even know how to do that. But anyway, um, let's see. Can we just rest or something? Hmm. Okay. Um, what about cast a spell? Omar. Quick fix on El Cid. Good. Now, um, let's cast a spell. Omar, what are your spells? Uh, scry Sight. The walls themselves will speak under direction of the spell, revealing to the spellcaster the location in the labyrinth. Oh, okay, this is good. And this um, helps illuminate. All right, let me see this. Oh, it just tells me the same thing I already knew. Well, that's not very helpful. Um, can I rest in here? No, there is no resting here. I was hoping maybe we could take a snooze. Oh my god. What do we do? All right, well, I'll tell you what we do. We first of all go into Brian, and we um, we equip... Oh, he has chainmail. El Cid has stuff. It's really just me that doesn't have anything. The hunter could equip that, yeah. Armor 4, equip this. Good lord. All right, now I've got something. Everybody else has stuff, now that I look at this. It's just, they started with things. Just a character that I made doesn't have anything. Firehorn. Interesting. All right. Um, let's see. So, did it tell you his armor? I want to see stats. Um, Brian has how much armor? Now, these aren't the stats I want to see. Ah, uh, that's funny, but not quite what I was looking for. Um, okay. Okay. Alright, well, let's, let's look around. Oh, there we go. Here's the shop. Get me in there. Yes, we made it into the shop. Oh my goodness. I needed to see this guy's beautiful face. Welcome to Garth's equipment shop. Oh, wealthy travelers. Not wealthy. Which of you is interested in my fine wares? Um, I need a bow. I need to buy something. Do you sell? Um, I need something to shoot people with. Please, God, have that. Ah, uh, here we go. Longbow. That's what I need. It's 60. Oh, man, it's so cheap. And arrows. Okay, give me all those, and then give me that. Okay. And then we need some other stuff, too. So we need... Uh... Hunter can use that. Hunter can use that. Okay. 
Okay. Um, interesting. We have scale armor, which is actually better than chainmail. Okay, that's nice. Uh, we need a helm. And we need... Uh... I mean, what's the difference? Gauntlets and leather gloves. Like, it's just armor one, but the cost is different. Alright, get some gauntlets then. Um, anything else that we want? No, we're good there. Alright, um... Let's see. Uh, view inventory. All right, so now we have gauntlets, a helm, a longbow, and skill armor. But I probably want to shoot with something else. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to now drag this guy down um, because everybody else can make melee attacks. So you have chainmail, gauntlets, halibird, helm, and a tower shield. You have a broadsword, chainmail, gauntlets, helm, and a tower shield. You have a buckler, leather armor, leather gloves, and a mace. And you have chainmail... And a tower shield and a war axe. Alright, so that's actually pretty good. Um, let me just go back. Back. Anything else that I'm really excited about? Plate armor, but... Uh, oh, maybe... Yeah, let's buy some plate armor. This is way better for, like, Brian the Fist. It gives him... It would be a net gain of two armor to, to get this. Yeah, I think that's uh, pretty important. So we'll buy plate armor. And um, El Cid, can you use plate armor? You can. We're going to buy him a plate armor too. We need people to survive, right? And then what armor can you use? Uh, not anything better than that. Actually, I might want to have Dr. Incompetent up front... Um, just so, because, you know, the hunter can actually use this as well. Let's do that then. Let me slide this around so that, uh, okay, that's better. I have more armor, you know, uh, in this, in this way. Uh, Brian, are you equipping the plate? No, you didn't. Um, equip that. And then, um, El Cid. Equip that. There we go. Armor class down to one. Oh, it's like D and D. Okay, the lower the armor class, the better. Actually, okay, cool. And then, I don't know if anybody can. I can sell the chainmail if I want. All right, let's just look around. Anything in here? Searching the room, you discover some parchment from the Adventurer's Guild Handbook. It reads: Explore the map at every square and every maze. There are magic mouths that give hints. There are one of a kind magic items and spell regeneration zones. Good maps will show you the logical spots for secret doors and secret rooms, too. All right, so they really want me to explore. Oh, my God. You face death itself in the form of five dwarves. These are the most evil-looking dwarves I've ever seen. We're going to fight. We're going to do this. Attack. Attack. Ranged attack. Um, attack. And we're going to... S oh, I don't have any songs. Um, ranged attack. We're going to cast a spell. We're going to arc fire, and we are going to... Oop, oop, oop. Wait, no, 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 go back. Um, cast a spell, arc fire, not on Brian the Fist, on the dwarves, and then cast a spell, um, Vorpal Plating, although he's not using fists. So let's just go ahead and do air armor. I know. Is that just for them? It doesn't seem necessary. Yep. Oh my. Alright, well, there were five dwarves, and now there's one. So let's see what just happened. Um, Brian swings at the dwarf and hits for 11 points of damage and killed him. Sir Grady hit for five. They missed El Cid. El Cid hits for four. Omar got air armor. Marcus throws an axe, oh my, and hits him for 17 points of damage and kills him. Doctor Incompetent shoots an arrow and hits for 10 and kills. The dwarf hits Doc and Comp for four. Merlin casts arc fire and hits for eight. Great! That's a joy. All right, fight bravely. Attack, attack, um... 
I, I might need to buy Doctor Incompetent and Melee item. I don't want to use, like, all bows on this. Um, attack. And... Oh, I can't make a ranged attack anymore because my throwing axe is gone. I didn't realize that was, like, a one-use thing. I need to get some more of those. Uh, anyway, um... We are going to defend, and we're going to defend, and we're going to um, cast a spell of quick fix on uh, Dr. Incompetent. Yes. And we got him, and we healed, and we got 616 pieces of gold and 57 experience points. That's great. All right, I'm going to go back here, and we're going to go into back in the end. And we're just going to be like, whew, thank goodness, we made it to the Adventurer's Guild. Well, everyone, this game is awesome. This is such a classic throwback, and I'd like to know what you guys think of this. Have you played this before? Did you play it in 1985 when the original came out? Um, did you ever play for the Nintendo or in subsequent years? Have you played this remastered version? What do you think of this? Would you like to see more of this? I'm very curious to know what you guys make of the Bard's Tale first installment of the trilogy here. Everyone, I hope you have an excellent evening or day, and I'll check you guys next time. Take care.